Mortal Kombat! Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel with Lifestyle Critic. I hope you're having a brilliant day. So in this video we are going to be reviewing Mortal Kombat Legends Battle of the Realms which is an animated sequel to last year's movie Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge and this time it tells the story of what may well be the last ever Mortal Kombat tournament ever so the stakes are really really high in this movie and it is a really enjoyable film I mean it's got a really cool premise loads of gore loads of fatalities loads of returning characters and loads of new characters as well which is really really great however we have seen this storyline playing out quite a few number of times now so it is getting a little bit repetitive and I would really like them to go down the deeper storylines and the deeper character development that the video games have recently done so I think it'd be really cool to see that playing out in future installments within this franchise but you know this is a really great movie and I'm going to be breaking it all down for you in this movie review. <laughs> So from a storyline point of view, there are actually a number of storylines taking place in this movie, which is really, really great as it definitely keeps it really interesting in this movie. So the first one and the main one is that Shao Kahn wants to take over Earthrealm like he always does. And he challenges Raiden to a final tournament to decide the fate of the realms once and for all, which Raiden accepts at the same time as this. Scorpion from the first movie returns to the Netherrealm and this time he is bonded with an artifact from the events in the island in the first movie and Shinnok wants to take this artifact from him and also Sub-Zero's brother, obviously Sub-Zero the main Sub-Zero died in the first movie and this time his brother is training with Smoke and their team members are being turned into cybernetic soldiers and they are trying to avoid this fate happening to them as well. So then the storyline focuses on all of these three storylines converging into one and seeing who is going to survive, who is going to win, and what is going to happen to the fate of the realms in this movie, which is really, really great. Now, from a positive point of view, you know, this movie is really, really easy to follow. There are a number of things going on, but it's not too complex for new fans, as well as hardcore Mortal Kombat lovers as well. And speaking of which, there are loads of fatalities, loads of gore and violence happening in this movie. So it definitely feels like a Mortal Kombat true fan service driven movie which is really, really great. Like I said before as well, the stakes are really, really high in this movie as obviously all of the realms, the fate of all of the realms are being decided by this single tournament forever. So it won't be a number of years till there's another tournament, which is really, really intense. Also, they do do a lot of world building outside of just having a tournament, which I think is really, really great. And also by the end of this movie, they could have a sequel to kind of see what's happening next. Or likewise, they have kind of somewhat concluded it if there isn't going to be a sequel after this as well which is really, really great. However, from a negative point of view, like I said, we have kind of seen this premise playing out quite a few number of times now. So it'd be really great to see something different as it does feel a little bit repetitive now. Also, I just feel like the ending of this movie just feels really, really forced. And I just feel like if they were going to do what they did do in the ending, they definitely should have given it a bit more time and fleshed it out a little bit more. But you know, from a storyline point of view overall, the Mortal Kombat sequel animated movie is actually pretty decent. <laughs> So the cast and characters in this movie are really, really great. Like I said before, they are predominantly focusing on well-known characters, but there are some new characters peppered in there as well, which is really, really great. So let's go through them one by one. So first up, we have Jordan Rodriguez, who is voicing the Liu Kang character, and he does do a really, really good job. You can still see that Liu Kang is the main chosen one from all of the different characters, and he is pure of heart as well. And you can see this playing out, especially in the final act of this movie as well. I do feel like there are some nice moments with this character, but I do feel like they could have pushed it so much further, especially because he had the opening sequence in this movie and comparatively the opening sequence in the first movie was so much more better and definitely did impact future events in this movie. And like I said, there is a nice moment in this movie with that, but I just feel like they could have done so much more with it in this film. Next up we have Joel McHale, who was just so brilliant and excellent as the Johnny Cage character. He just embodies this character so brilliantly. In this film, he just got some brilliant one-liners, really, really dynamic, super hilarious. And also, he does feel like he just steals the movie in certain moments. Definitely a bit of a scene stealer in this film. And in the same way as Kano was absolutely hilarious in the live-action reboot of Mortal Kombat, I feel like Johnny Cage is doing that for this movie. And I do feel like in the inevitable sequel to the live-action movie, I definitely feel like Ryan Reynolds 
should be playing the Johnny Cage character as if he plays him in the same way as he does in this movie then he'll do a brilliant job. Next up we have Sub-Zero and Scorpion and there are some classic moments of Sub-Zero versus Scorpion except this time there definitely has a new flavour and a new twist on everything. First of all it's Sub-Zero's brother who is against Scorpion this time and also they actually do have a bit of a team up in this movie as well which I think is really really great as they're always just being bitter rivals to one another and actually seeing them teaming up I just think is absolutely brilliant. We also see Katana in this movie. Like I said, there's loads of characters in this movie. So of course they can't do loads of character development in this film. But that being said, for the little character arc that they did give the Katana character, she does do a really, really good job. Next up we have Shokan versus Raiden, which definitely was very, very, very similar to the first ever Mortal Kombat live action movie. Definitely a very similar storyline beats happening between those characters and these two lead characters as well. We also have Smoke, Cyrex and Sector in this film which is really really great as obviously they're such classic characters from the first ever Mortal Kombat video game and it's really nice to kind of see their little subplot playing out in this movie. Next up we have Shinnok in this movie and he definitely plays the fallen elder god type character. Very very twisted but similarly to Katana I just feel like they could have pushed this character so much further and he does do some crazy stuff in the final act of this movie but similarly if they were going to do that they definitely should have given him a lot more story time in the main movie as well as in particular in the final act of this movie as well. Next up we have Shang Tsung, Jax, Kintaro, Kung Lao, Devora, and Striker. And I just feel like these definitely feel like very extra based characters. Really, really, really great to see them in here. And like I said before, of course, there's so many characters that they couldn't have given them all layered storylines. But you know, that being said, it's really, really great to see them here and definitely see all of the fights between all the different characters as well. Apparently, Melina is in this movie. It's a little bit of a blink and you missed her appearance. But I just feel like that was such a waste as the Melina character definitely should have been explored a lot more. She doesn't even look like Melina in this movie, which I just think was a bit of a wasted opportunity. There is also a hilarious cameo appearance by Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, which I think is absolutely hilarious. As obviously most recently, the Shaggy meme, the fact that he's going to be in Mortal Kombat 11 as a downloadable character was making the rounds. And as both of these properties are ultimately owned by Warner Brothers, they can definitely link them two together, which they do do really, really hilariously. And so from a cast and character's point of view, they are really, really great. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more fleshed out, no pun intended, with some of these characters, but on the whole, they are pretty decent in this movie. So from a visuals point of view, it definitely feels very Japanese anime inspired, but actually it works really, really well. It's really nice to see this continuation from the first movie and to see this stylistic interpretation coming back, which is really, really great. Like I said, it definitely does feel like a Mortal Kombat movie, as it's got plenty of gore, loads of fatalities, very, very violent, and all of the character depictions are very true to how you recognise them before in the video games. And so from a visuals point of view, I definitely feel like this movie is actually really, really strong. In terms of comparisons, I'd probably put this on the same level as the previous movie Scorpion's Revenge, as there were some things that I preferred in that movie and some things that I preferred in this movie. And also, I wouldn't say it's as good as the most recently released Mortal Kombat live action remake. I know that movie is very contentious. Some people love it. Some people really, really don't like it. I personally really, really liked it. You can see all of my reviews, by the way, of all of the Mortal Kombat movies. I'll link all of them down below in the description box below. But, you know, from a comparison point of view, I do feel like this is a very strong entry within the Mortal Kombat franchise. <laughs> So overall, I really, really enjoyed Mortal Kombat Legends, Battle of the Realms, I think it's a really great solid Mortal Kombat entry. I do think it could have benefited a lot from being a bit longer, so that they could have explored things and characters and storyline beats in a lot more detail. But you know, that being said, it is really solid for what it is. I think it would be really, really interesting and beneficial for this to be grown into a bit of a series, so that you can really focus on the world and the different character backgrounds. And then when you see them battling and combating each other, it will just mean so much more. So I definitely feel like this has true franchise potential and I'm really, really excited to see where it goes in the future. But as far as this movie is concerned, I have to give it a solid seven out of 10. I'd love to hear what you thought of this movie. So please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.